it's the next level. Adapt. That's what humans do, isn't it? A great leg up. We roll. We hack. Knuckle down and change. Even Snowpiercer is an adaptation. That was classic Wilford. While the world froze and the other mega rich tried to hole up in bunkers or upload their consciousness, Mr. Wilford dusted off his train set. Hey, panelers. Welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Paik. Hey, we got <laughs> Paik here. Steve is out, listeners. Yes, he's on a vacation with some family, but we do miss him. But we do have some feedback that we're going to be reading tonight. And the first form of feedback we have is for episodes two and three from Brian Constant. And he says, hey, guys. I've really enjoyed watching the first three episodes of Snowpiercer and listening to your takes. Thanks for the show recommendation. I had not heard of Snowpiercer before and still have not seen the movie, but I am enjoying the series. And that is awesome. Thanks, Brian. The song from the episode two, I believe, is actually Say It Ain't So, Joe. And it's actually an old song in reference to Shoeless Joe Jackson and other fallen heroes, including Richard Nixon. I recognized it as soon as I heard it, but here's a Wikipedia link on it for your information. So we'll post that in our notes when we post this episode thread on our Facebook account and our page, as well as on our YouTube. So that way you listeners and viewers could actually, you know, check that if you want. And I think uh, Steve and I actually touched on that too. So thanks, Brian, for doing that. He adds on, some things I liked about episode two, Melanie's quote, how is everything, everyone's train legs today? Uh, I also liked how they did the vibration on the track and the coffee and the cups, how they showed the perfect circle ripples. And then it was that crazy pattern of multiple ripples. Then last one was, I've heard of notes on napkins, but not notes on a shirt or what looked like an elastic cuff of underwear. And where exactly does one get a new pair of underwear? How is laundry done? That is a good question. <laughs> they haven't showed a laundry car yet, but I, I assume there's got to be one on there somewhere. There has out to be. Out of the thousand and one. <laughs> well, you know, if you look at Andre, he's kind of dirty and so is everybody else in the tale. So. Mm -hmm. And he adds on, notary. I think it might be Gary, Jerry, Terry, Barry from <laughs> Parks and Rec with three oh. crying, smiling emojis. <laughs> That's Yes, Gary, Jerry, Terry. <laughs> exactly right. This <laughs> is one of the greatest notaries in all of history. <laughs> and he got his name right at the very end of the series, I believe, too. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, he continues on saying, episode three, loved the back and forth interaction between Andre and Melanie. So did I. Leighton, quote unquote, authoritarian states usually control their own drug trade, which I brought up. Melanie, another quote from her, stating, Snowpiercer is an arc. It's not an authoritarian state. And Leighton going saying, uh, okay. <laughs> He also states, I also like the interaction between Leighton and the head janitor where he was talking about working in high-rise building and the train is just a high-rise turned on its side. And there appears to be a coming truce between the tail and the third class since the tail and the third car represent 70% of the passengers. Now, that's a lot of people. 
That really is. So, <laughs> and that's a thousand and one cars. So I'm curious myself. And he continues on saying, and I believe Melanie mentions there are 3,000 people on the train, which means that there are 2,100 between third class and the tail. That leaves 900 people between first and second class because I'm fairly certain they said 70% between third and tail, not second, third, and tail. Yeah, no, that, that checks out. That makes sense because I don't remember if they gave us an exact number, but I know first class is very limited. There's only, what, like 12 people or something up there. Like there's, and they're like families. Like there's not a ton yeah, of people. Yeah, it's in like first super class. higher ups. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And they are the extreme wealth that are there. Yeah. So that's the 1%. <laughs> yeah, and I'm wondering what they provide on this train, but we'll go into that later. <laughs> mm hmm. He continues on saying, uh, what I really missed in episode two and three is the lack of animation changing to real life. I think that would have been something really cool to continue to do, and I would have liked to see more of that. And I do agree with you, because with the very first episode, they did that whole introduction of how they approached and got on the train, even from the tail side. It wasn't just the people that had money or established themselves, you know. And he left a little feedback for Comic Talk. Everything I've heard about Diamond Direct is just no good. I've got a, a buddy that runs an online comic shop called Turbo Comics, and they're based out of Idaho here. And they've talked about how difficult it is to deal with them because they have to purchase so much stock of lesser desired comics in order to get the ones they really want. So, you know, so DC selling direct, I think, is actually a good thing thing for comic shops and for comic readers yeah it's it we're in such sad states at this point with comics and and how we're able to get them uh, my comic shop is always delayed by a day or so so i'm hoping with everything that's going on there's some sort of resolution maybe somebody could come out there but you know with comics the way they have been over the years it's a dying art with the physical content that we get every week with in comics and i do agree with you it's it's sad but you know you have to go to your online for most part if it's a hard comic to come by or reaching out to your local comic shops if they are able to get them a pull list is always recommended everybody i always do one and i have one so and he has a, a few things to finish up which is Last thing is, I hope you guys talk about the Michael Keaton being cast to play Batman in the Flashpoint movie. Yes, we will. <laughs> also, it is confirmed he is going to play a part in setting up Batman mm -hmm. Beyond, which will be amazing. So I already think you already gave my comic talk, Brian. So thank you <laughs> for that ahead of time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It is definitely confirmed. Is it confirmed now? I know they've kind yeah. of been hinting a lot of things, but I don't know if everything's been fully concrete. But it Yeah, is it's on Variety, cool, a whole cool. bunch of things. And so he's in talks. He's definitely going to be. He's going to put on a cape and a cowl. It's going to be awesome. That's awesome. Uh, what I've That's heard recently great. is Michelle Pfeiffer possibly coming back. Man, that would be... <laughs> and, and playing Catwoman. They keep having to recast so. and stuff's not working out with the new stuff. So let's just go back to where... <laughs> let's go back to what worked. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. That's how it should be. The last little bit, Karate Kid. It was Johnny Lawrence, not Billy. Yeah, I was, I I was screaming at my before. phone listening to you guys that time. Too. I knew what you knew. <laughs> yeah, he, he knew what we were talking about. So he, he goes, um, keep up the work, guys. I enjoy listening. Yes, Billy and was thank you. the name of the actor. That's well, Will, William Zapto. Yeah, Billy's out. Yeah, that's that's what I, I it's stuck in my head. So Brian, thank yeah. you for correcting me, and I I remembered after the podcast and the long after I edited, I wasn't gonna put that in there saying, "Hey guys, I'm a <laughs> dumbass," and I didn't do that. So yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna take it away with our, our synopsis of episode four first without their maker mm -hmm. and if you want to read that pick that would be great sure episode four a shocking twist in a murder investigation brings leighton and till's manhunt to a cat and mouse climax but leighton is getting too close to melanie's big secret which may prove the most dangerous game of all short and sweet and there is a big dangerous game going on <laughs> that is for certain so with that listeners we have to jump into our top fives good evening passengers be advised, track conditions will deteriorate over the next 24 hours. 
So start us off, Pake. What's your uh, number five? All right. My number five for this episode was the little things. There's um, just those those small things that I think people take for granted nowadays that end up meaning so much on this train. Like, you know, the, the episode opens up with, with Jinju giving herself this goal, this personal goal of bringing happiness and joy to other people as a way to keep morale and keep things going. Like people have to have small things and it's showing her, you know, cutting the sushi and like just being able to have like fresh, fresh sushi on that train has got to be incredible after seven years of being on there. It's those (laughs) tiny little things like that. Or when Josie is sitting with Astrid and she scoots the bowl over just that one like simple bite of what was it? Rice or porridge or whatever was in that bowl. Like you could tell like that meant the world to her just tasting like actual food and not those, uh, blocks (laughs) blocks <laughs> or getting to look out the window for the first time in how many years and see yeah. the sun and the snow and the mountains. Yeah. That, so the little things. It is the little <laughs> things. Uh, kind of references and harkens back to the crow. <laughs> it's the little things that Shelly loved. Uh, my number five would be uh, Jinju's relationship with uh, Breakman Bess and how Bess states that she is having a relationship with someone, you know, up train with Jinju and that Jinju yeah. should see what second class is like because I don't think Jinju knows exactly what's going on down there, especially since Bess is a brakeman. So she's not really true second class. You know, I mean, she gets to go yeah. all around the train, but only when she's on the job. But she yeah, still lives she a third class see, life. <laughs> yeah, and she gets to see everybody, all the different classes and how they are, but yet she's stuck in second yeah. class. Yeah. So we're moving to number fours. All right. My number four was Eric and his plan, or lack thereof. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, I noticed one thing that I noticed is he lies to that uh, third class worker that was cleaning the table, you know, asking him, oh, from you're from second. He goes, oh, yeah. Like, almost like he knows that, like, there is this, the class tension gets worse. The, <laughs> if he's a first, yeah, it does. If, he's a, if he's a firsty. And, you know, and I think, or maybe he was just lying to him because he wasn't sure if they had figured out that he was a first class person that had committed the murder on Nikki. And, you know, he was maybe trying to stay a, a step ahead of them by at least not letting somebody, you know, the, the brakeman and stuff know that there was a firsty in third class at the time Mm. but they figured it out (laughs) yeah they did so i wonder what his plan really was because it was just a matter of time before he was found so he knew it wasn't going to end well i think yeah and it did not end well that was a very brutal death my my number four would be andre's thoughts about nikki's death and that the people in the third class is based there is just a catalyst his conversation with Miss Audrey and Melanie's thoughts that it doesn't matter where the murder came from. And it this is really getting deep within the show itself and what's going on within this case. Number three yep. is Melanie and Bennett. They uh, started planting some seeds in this episode where I was, you know, having to ask myself, what is their relationship exactly? Does it go a little bit deeper than work partners? Because I wasn't really able to tell at that point. Of course, at the end of the episode, close to the end of the episode, he tells her over the phone when she's pretending to be, you know, speak to Mr. Wolford. And yeah. He says, well, I miss you, Mel. And I was like, okay, there's something, something. There. Something's going there. And then we see it in the next episode <laughs> yeah. anyway. I yeah. refer to him as Sean because that's what she uh, refers to him in the next episode too. So, mm. yeah, <laughs> that's something to be looked into. She is a woman. She's a grown woman. She has to have sexual needs, needs companionship, uh-huh. you know. So, and spoilers for the next episode. If you haven't already <laughs> yeah. read it, uh, read it, watched it. I'm pretty sure it's in the comic, too. Who knows? But mm-hmm. I have not read it. But I haven't either. Yeah. So, basically, yeah, there's a relationship there in some weird, strange way. So, <laughs> <laughs> my number three would be uh, Melanie's ruse while talking to the conductor, which would be similar to what you were talking about before with Sean. And, uh, you know, she was acting like she was Mr. Wilford. So, you know, it's very manipulative to the guests. I like to call them guests on the train, <laughs> even though <laughs> they're classes. But it, it's like... It, you start to see everything unraveling of the truth of certain characters within this episode, as well as even, you know, the one after this. So as we go further into this train, 
as it's tunneling down this uh, ice track, as it were, we're starting to gather more information about these people, getting a little bit more yeah. personal, which is pretty cool. And my number two is just how creepy LJ is. <laughs> Lila Jr. throughout this episode. Uh, just Andre would come up with these, would say yeah. these you know, dark you know, kind of things or would hint at, you know, the investigation stuff that he had figured out. And she would just laugh or smile where you were like, yeah, something's going on. Or when he, she's playing yeah. the music and I was like, this like seductive <laughs> dancing and creepiness. Like, that's not the first time she's done that. <laughs> yeah. 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 She's a little bit unsettled. And yeah. Definitely not all there. She was like so. obsessed with the whole cannibalism story from the tale where she's like, exactly. I yeah. would, I, you know, it's just like, <laughs> why'd you stop doing that? That makes people scared of you. So, you know, mm. What was she said? You know, I'd I'd eat a guy so people would shit bricks at the thought of me. <laughs> yeah, that's a psychopath. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> well, my number two would be the help from sanitation for Zara. The quick change in the the sanitation room and her way to use the the chip to gain access throughout the the train itself, as well as talking to the lady that was in the third car or third class as it were yeah and my number one is where we are left off at the end of the episode andre's in the drawers yeah <laughs> like, they put so, so but you know i know this is like okay it's only the fourth episode they're not even halfway through the season and the murder is solved and layton has been put in the drawers i was like where do they go with the rest of the season from exactly. here exactly so, yeah it was quite a cliffhanger ending It was there. a cliffhanger, <laughs> at, you know, right there for us to, you know, for those who are ready to binge watch. But for those of you that were watching week to week, unfortunately, I had to watch them <laughs> close together. <laughs> and I got to, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I kind of figured that was going to happen. Kind of like yeah. one of those missions that you see in an action movie. We've got to get him because he's here and he's stuck in, you know, he's in isolation. Yeah. So we have to get him out. But that that was pretty cool, and I also made and and I'll get I'll reference to this later. Think Demolition Man and what they're doing with those people with yeah. the prison, <laughs> at in these boxes. Yeah. So I'm wondering what else is going on in there. We'll get to that later, though, people. Yeah, we'll we'll talk about yeah, that exactly, next episode because <laughs> yeah. we'll dive deeper into that. My number one would be Andre's talk with Lila Junior Folgers. That's why they call her LJ because it's Lila Junior. Of all things, Lila Jr. I've never heard that for a girl. It's yeah, it's very unique. I've never heard of. I don't know if there's something about the culture difference. Of, I mean, it's not like a super far future, so it's so that's a weird thing to think. You know, you're not used to a daughter taking her exactly. mother's name as a junior. I don't think I've Me ever neither. really Maybe heard this of that will before. Break grounds. The Folgers are really <laughs> weird. Yeah. The Folger family is just weird in a lot of ways, though. Like, Folgers crystals. <laughs> the whole family is kind of screwy. Oh, not not in real life, but I on this show at least. I mean, I don't know any Folgers in real life, but me neither. <laughs> coffee people, but but at least on this show, the Folger family like they're all a little screwy. I, I just like how Andre picked her brain. You know, the moving of body parts. Mm -hmm. He knows that there was someone else involved, and he knows you know Andre's there, and that he knows that she is involved in some way, and obviously her psycho talk. And the way she's talking, revealing that she and Eric did that together. Touche, you know, exposing her mm -hmm. as an basically an accomplice to murdering somebody. Yeah, man, but Andre's a great detective. Yeah. <laughs> he just worked a lot of a lot of a uh, I kind of go back a little note on that because yeah, I just noticed like the psychology he was really good at. Oh, definitely. Because even when he walks into like the first time when he goes into first class and he's just eating all the food as messy as he can and he's just trying to make people uncomfortable well he knows and how I to feel read like a there's room. a yeah and i think he's purposely trying to see okay who in this room has like a deep hatred or dislike of like people who are lower on the train he's like if i get under their skin a little bit maybe i can get somebody to say something like that's how or, i kind of read that it's like or he knows gain what he's some doing. sort of trust which he did with uh bess yeah and you know and i think the other brakeman at at a certain point and if you think about it melanie herself yeah he kind of gains some sort of rapport with her where he's able and she puts a lot of trust into him if you think about it in the end and she's always regarding him but you know the end result him being in a drawer yeah <laughs> he knew too much <laughs> so we have a few quotes i'm gonna have you start us off with your quote 
All right. My first favorite quote is right there whenever like, that moment when he's eating the stuff messy, whatever, he leads it off. He goes, two things first. I don't give a shit who you are, and somebody up here has got a thing for chopping off third-class dicks. To which LJ just immediately laughs at that. <laughs> yeah. Well, my quote would be, humans, we adapt and change. And that was very deep from Jinju in the opening scenes, how she talks about adapting and how Mr. Wilford had changed it within his own train. So he just basically made this small world in this train system. And, of course, they have to adapt within that. Now, mind you, they can't go anywhere else outside this train, unfortunately. <laughs> so it that's where the systems of classes came to, and I think Mr. Wilford created that. Yeah. All right. Most of my, my, my quotes are all kind of things that I found funny. But the next one was uh, when Melanie is talking to, to Bennett up in the front and he's kind of has to put on this like front to her to pretending to be Wilford. And he goes, well, that would piss me right off. Huff, huff, huff. <laughs> 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 so I like that. And then, yeah, I do, I've got one more. You want me to finish up mine and then I'll Go do ahead, finish yours. up yours. I'll do my last yeah. two after that. Another one, uh, it's kind of a joint quote between LJ and Andre, where she's telling him about Eric. He says, you know, oh, these these records, he brought these records, they were his dad's. He hates his dad. He was white. And then Andre looking at what kind of al like music in the different albums, he goes, yeah, no shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> well. I have one. Well, I'll do the two extras. So the first one after that, after yours would be, he does whatever Mr. Wilford wants. And that would be Melanie to the Brakeman when Andre mm -hmm. states that he w he has to get to first class. Uh, you Basically, Melanie backing up Andre and Andre must have some sort of like suspicion about Melanie and her control. Because that look and glance that he gave her was just like, huh? what's going on here? Because you don't ever see Mr. Wilford. All you hear is her voice. Everything is coming from Melanie and representation mm -hmm. of, well, Mr. Wilford says this. So Mr. Wilford's obviously not present and there's no video obviously on this train. So I guess he didn't set up anything with optics and video and anything to show his presence there. So everything is hearsay. Mm. Yeah. And my last one would be, he was born for the freeze. And that, you know, how Lila talks about Eric during Andre's interrogation of her. She knows a lot of what Eric's intentions are, and she's not saying anything. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Do you have any additional notes that you had on the uh, episode? Let me see. I've got just a few little things. Uh, like, in the beginning of the episode, they mentioned the methane sh shortage after all those cows had died and how they're going to handle that. And this is one of those, another one of those like little things you don't really think about or you take, you know, <laughs> for granted of like, oh yeah, they would need, you know, to be able to use stuff like that for, maybe that's how they power certain things. Or maybe or it's, it's for you cooking, know. you know, yeah, yeah, you have to have an there's, open there's flame or something. That. That's what I was thinking. And I'll get into that later. And yeah. after this episode, cause I started thinking a little bit more yeah. of what's going on within this train, how they get it to, to work and what it does. Yeah. They kind of threw a little throwaway line that, uh, Melanie w went to MIT. Mm. And like within that line, because, you know, he says, what are we going to do about the methane? She goes, well, I got an idea. How about goat farts? <laughs> and he goes, oh, MIT. I see that paid off. <laughs> <laughs> and then also, is it just me or does the doctor's obsession with, or I don't know if obsession is the right word, maybe just strong connection to the people that are in the drawers seem a little creepy to you? Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just like, mm, yeah. it's a little too invested in these people in the drawers. Yeah. Well, I'm sure we'll figure out why eventually. But yeah, that's it's all like a notes. mausoleum, that train. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. My extra notes would be the the chips are being used a lot more. They are being traded for what the bottom fourth class or the tail need to get what mm -hmm. they want. They are checked out all the time by the brakemen. They they have to be searched and checked for that purpose. Something is going on with the trade of these chips though, because they're being utilized and. People are breaking into certain class areas that, you know, should be off limits to them. My next note would be, uh, it was nice to find out that the, the first class people were allowed to have sidearms on Snowpiercer. Yeah, or at least uh, their security. What? I said, or at least their security. I don't know if yeah, they Yeah, the security does, have, but... but yeah, the but the first class itself, mm -hmm. it's like, you yeah. know, they got like a There's weapons up something. there, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and they have special pri privileges for, for those that are, you know 
for those that have all this money yeah. because, you know, they paid their way onto this train. But, you know, what's money now? How many cycles later? They're like seven years in at this point. Money means mm-hmm. nothing. It's really what they offer. Yeah. And eventually it's all, all status. status and <laughs> I'm curious as to what the first class offer because, as you could tell, the tail – the tailies are usually the ones that are working or even in, you know, third class, they're working to get what they need. Yeah. And I'm curious to as to where the bullets come from for the 38 that the bodyguard has. I wonder if they keep the shells and remake the bullets, kind of like in Walking Dead, where, you know, you had Eugene who was making uh-huh. bullets for them because they have to be scarce at times. And, you know. Especially when we saw that assault oh, yeah. on the tailies when they were trying to come in. They had guns then, too. So where are they getting these bullets from? Yeah. Yeah. It's a good question. That, that was it for episode four. And we're going to move on to episode five. And the synopsis for episode five, Justice Never Boarded. And it, the description is, Tensions between third class and first class are boiling as Melanie stages the trial of the Snowpiercer killer and makes fateful decision about which side to favor. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> and we're going to go right into our top fives with this one. <laughs> and my number five would be Bess and Jinju's relationship being official now and Bess's upgrade to second class. And I thought that was pretty cool. But I'm wondering if there's, like, a a conflict of interest there because she's involved with somebody who's in second class. And plus, she's a brakeman. Now, is she going to be discriminated by those that are brakemen in second class that she has to work with now? Now that she is in second class? You know, I think, what was it, third class that she's in? She was in third, uh, and she got moved up to second when she moved in with Jinjin. Now. How do you work with those people? Now it's like, oh, you're some hoity-toity person that's right. just above me. <laughs> and we all know that feeling if you have somebody who's a friend that you're a coworker with and gets a superior job and then, you know, your your attitudes towards yeah. them become different. So I'm curious if this happens later on yeah. in the episodes to come. All right. My number five actually is something separate, but then it ties into what you just said with that relationship. My number five was just Oz himself osweiler the other brakeman yeah. her partner he's such mm-hmm. a dick <laughs> he just really oh, yeah, is he is talking down yeah. to all the third the the 30s mm-hmm. you know like they are gross children who don't know how to behave themselves in any situation and he's just such you know on his high horse or high chair he's standing on a chair over them um but then i th- <laughs> i thought for a moment that, that till maybe killed him and i was like oh no that's gonna be real bad for her but then at the end, you know, he's he's not dead, or at least I don't think so. It looks like he got up and walked away. And I was like, oh, good. No, no, that's not good. That's probably even worse that he's not dead because he knows everything. She just let Andre out. She just is, a, a you know, helping this prisoner, basically. And yeah. she just started her, like, new life up in second with Jinju. And now all of that's going to go to hell because of that situation, I, I fear. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And my number four would be the class distinction between the, with the tribunal or within the tribunal itself, within the court proceedings. We are starting to see a form of like a legal part of the train, some sort of structure in justice and their own justice system. And apparently those from all the different classes are picked to be there as like a jury in some respect. Which not originally. They didn't have the third people. The third weren't supposed to be part of that. They wanted it just first and second. And then it was because of what Audrey had said that she managed to petition Melanie into letting a third class person be on this jury. Which worked out to some degree, but a lot of changes and a lot of things went a little bit up and down (laughs) and up and down in this episode, too, regarding that. So my number four is, again, I brought it up last Mm -hmm. on 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 episode four, but the Folger family and just how... (laughs) <laughs> kooky they really kind of are the the thing with the eyeball just that was creepy no I didn't, like she stabs her father's eye out when she's a kid and then now Obsession about they it, have this too. weird like game that they play with the the fake eye and then the whole family's just creepy i think like and then mr folger says something i'll take care of this and then and then lila threatens melanie saying you know oh my husband you don't know it he's gonna take you you know his connection with with lj so he's going to take care of this if you don't do the right thing 
what was as so if LJ was sentenced, like what were they gonna do? Like, yeah, I don't know. I don't trust I, them. What at power all. do they have really on that? Train, yeah. You know? <laughs> well, that would lead me to my number three, which would be Andre's dreams. They are a bit of memories, from what I could tell, but a lot of it seems forced. So I'm thinking while he's in the box because they had the sensors on his head and everything. Are they trying to force him to relive certain things? Is he, you know, is this like a demolition man thing where they're trying to force him to learn certain things? Or are they trying to record his memories or things that he's gone through? You know? Wow, I didn't even think about that. I don't think he's going to come out of that (laughs) box. Yeah, exactly. Wow, that would be, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I I don't think he's going to come out of the box like Stallone from Demolition Man and knowing how to sew or anything (laughs) like that. But, yeah. But I think it's their way of manipulating and. You know, that is pretty much like uh, an iced prison. You know, yeah. they're under suspension. Their mind is being uh, pretty much, you know, looked at and recorded. So I'm wondering if that's going to come out later on because what we obviously know what happens in this episode when he gets out. Yeah. So, and yeah, I'm, that's going to be really interesting to see where that goes. Yeah. All right. My number three is Josie just doing what she does it's back to her quick change performance of a lifetime this time kind of switching roles with astrid from from third class letting her you know fill in for her. oh they we look too much like the jackboots don't care they're not going to recognize that it's not me and you <laughs> is switched in yeah in, in places and, which is really risky and clever but you know she had to she set herself that goal of i have to find andre i've got to find Leighton, see where he's at what's going on yeah definitely and yeah, they eventually do. <laughs> yeah. My number two would be uh, Lila Jr. on trial. What she brings up and how Sean was involved with Melanie is all crazed and crazy in that sense because she brings up Sean's name and not knowing what is really going on because Melanie's like, what the? <laughs> you see the reaction on her face at that time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, Sean, Sean was the person that was killed originally that had all of his limbs and everything Removed. Yes. Yes. Sean Wise. Yeah, and then they get that information, yeah. but the the look on Melanie's face is crazy. And are these lies? You know, are are these yeah. just statements? The truth of what happened, or what was brought up about the victims of oh god and their genitalia being cut and everything? That was the too yicky to hear from me. You know, it's <laughs> like I was like, eek. I, I'm no, sorry, don't go there. Don't touch me there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I wonder. Yeah, just how much does LJ actually like yeah. know? It's well, we'll have to see. Because it has to be enough to to get Melanie scared to to uh, go against her and her family at the time. Maybe she's into cannibalism, and that was the whole point, and that's why she was taking human <laughs> genitalia for body parts to eat. And you know, oh god, it's like uh, what was that? That Ooh, I don't even want to think about that. <laughs> It's kind of like in the movie Funny Farm with Chevy Chase, and he goes, oh, what is this? Oh, <laughs> sheep balls. Oh. Yep. <laughs> he spits it out. <laughs> All right. My number two is the third class is starting to revolt, where it's not just the tail anymore. Now there's this official third class uprising that is starting. Hmm. And I think LJ basically just getting a slap on the wrist for multiple counts of murder is going to be a pretty big catalyst for the third class revolting and rising up yeah so yeah and my number one would be lila's psychopathic you know psycho or I should say psychotic talk with mm-hmm. melanie at the very end you know and yeah uh, what was it the waiting room or something and then hospitality room. yeah hospitality yeah. there you go and then seeing andre in the flashback dream with the people while eating the flesh of people you know it's pretty much a whole realization that this is a uh, pretty much a memory of what happened and then stating never again like a chant with these people and it just shows that he was part of it at that time and one of the few that stopped i guess the cannibalism and i think he holds that memory in his mind because he regrets the things that they were doing within yeah. cannibalism and all that stuff all right and my number one let's wrap that up is uh Wilford, the character of Wilford or Melanie, it's really Melanie. And how many people yeah. know this? Who, because I think at this point, it's pretty clear that Jinju is aware of Melanie's situation. Yeah. The way that she talks to her about, you know, 
oh, you know, if you're, you're putting a 30 on the, on the tribunal. And it's like, she doesn't even mention something about like, well, what does Wilford say about that? It's like, oh no, you're doing this and it's your call. Like she knows that Melanie is Wilford, I think. So how many people know that other than, I guess, just like Javier and Bennett that are up there in the front with her. <laughs> and so then it's like, but then you have like these first class people starting to like plot against Melanie. And I'm like, I don't think you guys realize how much trouble you're going to put yourselves in if you try doing that. You can't really plot against the person who's in charge of you, even though you don't realize that she is. So like yeah. Lila keeps threatening her and it's like, mm, if only you knew who you were talking to, I, I doubt you'd be that bold. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> I can make you disappear. Mm -hmm. You don't know. <laughs> yes. So do you have any quotes for this particular episode or no? I've I've got a bunch of quotes right, that cool. I really liked, so I'll kind of run through them. Kind of at the beginning, they don't really have a name for this character, as far as I know. But there's the this third class bartender, the one who brings the roaches into first class, mm. as kind of a little statement. And as he's switching, you know, uniforms with the other guy, and the guy's just like, "I don't want to get involved in this. I don't." He said, "You live in third. You are involved. This revolt is mandatory, <laughs> basically." Josie, while working on the arm of the, the lady who had her arm frozen and smashed, mm -hmm. tells her, I was a vet. My patients didn't talk back. So that was fun. Audrey has another great revolt line where she says, third touches every system on this train. We will be heard. Yep. I'm pretty sure that's coming. <laughs> yeah, it was important. Between Ruth and Melanie talking, and Ruth says, doesn't Mr. Wilford understand that you can't just change the rules? To where Melanie replies, I guess they're his rules to change. Meaning? Melanie is Mr. Just Wilford. <laughs> yes. And then right after that, you know, says he's doing the will of the people. And Ruth responds with, we don't have will. We have order. And then my final one that I liked was Josie talking about Leighton to, uh, I think his name is Terrence, the head janitor, where he says, maybe he died because he he's not the dying type. You've met him. <laughs> <laughs> Those are good polls, man. Those are really good. Mm. A lot of great quotable moments from this episode. Oh, definitely. You you hit them all. I know. I unfortunately <laughs> don't have any because you got all the good ones. So <laughs> <laughs> I stole them. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, you did. So we got a bit of feedback this week, everybody. Not just from Brian, Yay. but we got some from Daphne and Cat. So Paik, if you would do me the honor of reading Daphne's. Sure. Daphne Backman says. I was really hoping that Nikki would somehow survive, but alas, she did not. I love that they wrapped up the story of who killed the third-class passengers in quick fashion because it means there's a much bigger story to tell. I feel like that. I feel that there are all these interconnecting threads that are not all getting attention at this time, but they will come to life at some point. LJ as the killer did not surprise me, as I think something has been off about her since the beginning. But I think she'll be dormant for now. I think we can expect more debauchery from her later on if she survives. Mm. Melanie continues her attempts to balance the classes while walking a tightrope. There are too many people to keep happy, and no matter the outcome of the trial, one class was going to get pissed. I love the different ways they show us the class differences, including the artwork that leads to the dining hall in the first class. In addition, Bear McCreary does the music for this show, and I love his musical storytelling in The Walking Dead. Yep. He's pretty cool, too. Yeah. He actually did something recently. Oh, yeah. Kevin Smith tweeted out something. It was a squirrel outside his house. And Bear says, I just <laughs> fixed this for you, Kevin, and put all this weird oh, Walking nice. Dead style stuff going on outside <laughs> with the squirrel chasing around. It, you can see the difference. So if you watch Kevin's video and then you watch uh, Bear's actual you know, music soundtrack behind it, it makes it more eventful and fun to watch. So keep in mind, listeners. Mm -hmm. Yeah, music does make a big difference on TV shows and movies. So, Oh, yeah. Well, I'll read Cats, and Cat Craft says, Hi, Mark, Paik, and Steve, and Absentia. Here's some feedback for you, <laughs> with a big smiley face. <laughs> I'm loving Snowpiercer. If a show can reveal plot points and things that I haven't already guessed, I loved it. Then it gives me a certain number of what-the-fuck moments, I'm all in. <laughs> I tend to focus on tiny details in the background of the scenes for clues and ideas. In episode four, at the three minute mark, in Melanie's quarters, she has an Erlenmeyer flask, big biology book, a book on Darwin, one with wisdom, quote unquote, on it, legible on the spine, and prominently displayed book titled 
the science of human perfection. There were a few hints she went to Harvard and Yale and a page from a book on the wall that was only clear for a split second. I couldn't read it, but it looked like Latin, maybe. All these gave me an idea, a crazy theory or two, but I think I'll keep them to myself for now. And of course you will, Kat. Mm. Of course. I know, because I'm real curious to see where you're going <laughs> exactly. with that. I know she's a very well-educated, well-read person, but what's, what's that making you think about her? Exactly. <laughs> she knows how to manipulate people. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, we have some, since Steve's not here, he left us some audio feedback, and we're going to play it right now. Yay. So sit tight, listeners, and here comes Steve. Hey, Mark and Paik, this is Steve. This is for episodes four and five of Snowpiercer. First off, I want to say thank you so much, Paik, for stepping in for me while I am taking some time off. I will be back. I'm not sure if I'm going to make it back for six and seven, but I'll definitely be back for uh, the end of the series. I really, really, really like these episodes. I, You know, episode four, we get the solution to our mystery. We find out, you know, the reason, not really the reason maybe, but we, we find out the who killed these men and kind of why they were killed. We find out that uh, Lila Jr. is kind of psycho. And uh, <laughs> yeah. of course, then we get that that moment at the end when uh, end of episode four, where Leighton is shoved into the drawer. And then, of course, episode five, which was I just finished watching it. And wow, a lot of stuff revealed there. We we see that uh, the some of the kids that are brought up train were put into the drawers. We find out that there are 400 drawers. We don't know how many of those drawers are are filled, but uh, I really, really liked it. It was it was a, a great, moving the story forward really well. And uh, we get some more of the mystery. We find out about this list and uh, where is Osweiler there at the end. But uh, a couple of things that I, that I wanna point out that I, I saw that I, I hadn't noticed before, or a couple of things that, that stand out to me. First off, I loved, there was a couple of scenes, especially the one between Melanie and the other engineer there, the one that she was having sex with, where you can really see motion in, I don't know how they do that with the, with the camera or what, but you can really see the motion of the train. You also get a little bit of it when Melanie is talking to Lila Jr., that motion of the train. I thought it was a really cool, cool effect. Uh, and I don't know how they did that, but it was really, uh, really kind of cool to see. And you kind of hear the rumbling of the train underneath it. And you get that whole, uh, that whole motion, motion effect, which I really, really love. And then, gosh, oh, I had to collect my thoughts for a second there. I really love the flashback of showing us the kill cult and that it was Leighton in effect that killed the kill cult leader and then brought his heart back. And we had heard the story through dialogue. Leighton telling that story, but actually seeing it play out in his kind of dream state was was really good. <laughs> so, okay, guys, can't wait to hear this one from you. <laughs> All right, awesome. Yeah, that was awesome. He Thanks, brought up some Steve. really good stuff. Yeah, that, yeah. yeah, the Kill uh, Cult thing. Steve, it's got to be <laughs> is it a little weird calling in to your own podcast? I hope yeah. not. <laughs> I would be too. If you know, maybe one day that'll yeah. happen. Steve will be in charge. <laughs> <laughs> you might get a break. <laughs> yeah, he brought up some really good stuff that, yeah, that, that was kind of in some of my notes that, uh, you know, the 400 drawers, because that's exactly something that LJ said in her trial when she was speaking, and she said, this train has, you know, or whatever Sean had told her, said he's got, it's got 400 secrets. Yeah. That I won't tell what they are. And I was like, well, that's how many drawers there are. And when he noticed them, you know, Josie finding some of the kids in there, and I was like, Miles better not be in one of those. Yeah, somewhere. exactly. For the fact like, that it, they were prepping I was like, him. is there even an apprenticeship? Yeah. I was like, is there even an apprenticeship or are they just taking all the kids and experimenting on them in, in these drawers? Is some, what nefarious thing Using is going their on brains. here? What is this experiment? Yeah. yeah. Wow. So I have a few notes here regarding the episode. But before I do that, thank you, Steve, so much for please yeah. you know for recording that it was amazing i know you couldn't be here you're with your family i understand and the best to you and your family on your vacation yep. and keep well and keep safe absolutely so do you have any I'll try my best to hold down the fort for this week later. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do you have any uh any notes for this episode one extra note yes one extra note that uh was wondering about which is 
Um, and I looked it up online. It's the, the janitors are Annie and Terrence are the ones that help Josie get into the drawers to find Layton. Yeah. And then they go in and they steal some stuff and leave and kind of abandon her there. But what was it that they were taking? And I'm starting, I'm, I'm wondering, are they getting drugs or whatever? Are they, is it what it is needed to make Cronall? Mm. Are they the ones that have been running that kind of black market <laughs> situation yeah, like with the, the one who played they the were janitor going in there and she just pushed her way through afterwards you know that thing yeah mm -hmm. yeah it makes you think or maybe they were looking for more of those uh those little bugs you know chips the chips yeah you know, just to get where they need to try to move mm -hmm. themselves a little bit up the the cars as they can because i'm i'm curious with a thousand and one train cars you know brian had topped off on this with his feedback but you know that's a lot of train cars to get through at that certain point yeah. you know which i think they have like an under not really underground but like there's like a second layer underneath the floor you know where everybody walks that has like a quicker way to well, travel there has to, to be for the fact different. that how did yeah. they get all the way to the tail like melanie and the rest of them with the military yeah with all those guns with not being and it, it would take a long time depending on where they're yeah. stationed to get from like let's even the midpoint of the train to get to the tail. <laughs> yeah. So who mm -hmm. knows? We'll, maybe we'll see some things uncovered at this point later on. But with the train at being a thousand and one cars, I don't recall if they mentioned on how it was powered. But to make that train go to the speeds that it is going with that many cars, it it, it has to take a lot of power to push it to get to those limits. You know? Yeah. And my last one would be, uh, I had a thought about the people in the train. If you notice, they're all very fit. If I was fed well in first, second, and third, I would be fat. Unless there was a gym. <laughs> we have not seen a gym on this train. Yeah, I haven't seen the yeah, gym car. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, look at... So we'll have to track those. Look for the gym uh, the car and the laundry car. This, We've brought those up. The thing this that episode. brought this to my mind is like <laughs> Melanie and that guy and they were boning. And, you know, I was like, wow, look at him. He's got abs. He's got muscles. And, you know, she, <laughs> she's kind of fit herself. Damn. Yeah. I, I wonder if there's a gym on his train. Are you going to see this? How are they working out? And <laughs> if you look at the people in first class, too, they are very well trimmed. And they don't do anything but just sit around exactly. and drink Exactly. How are they doing this? <laughs> Unless there's a plastic surgeon on the train doing something, liposuction, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so that was pretty much all we had with feedback and uh, with our other notes for this particular episode. We're finally done with uh, episodes four and five for the podcast. But, Pig, do you have any overall thoughts based upon the last two episodes and where the show is going? Um, I don't know. Uh... I'm yeah, like I said earlier, I'm just really interested to see where they go with I think the main thing I'm really curious now is what is going on with the drawers. They said they because Melanie even mentions to Jinju, it's like that it that's an experiment. They're experimental. That there is something that they are doing with those drawers and the people that are in them. And I'm really curious to see where that story goes and to find out what is going on with the drawers and what is their nefarious or maybe even not maybe it is something that's supposed to be helping the the future of mankind in some way what are mm. they doing in those drawers yeah, i agree with you that's what i want to know but you know the show just keeps me intrigued every episode so i love seeing where things twist and turn on the show as we go along so that's what keeps us and i'm so glad that steve brought this up as an idea to podcast on so that's why we continue on so the following yeah. podcast after this will be a double episode one as well so we could keep up with you the listeners because Pake brought it up and a few other listeners who i spoke to on michael and jessica's grim life collective youtube channel when i was doing a live watch a few of you guys had uh messaged me saying hey it'd be great if you get caught up and that way we could actually listen to your podcast after we you know watch the most recent episode so we're trying to do that we're trying to cater to you guys. So, yeah, yeah, you do six and seven exactly. next episode, then you'll be caught up at that point. There we go. And that's you what we're You can finish the last doing. three episodes week to so, week. And, and on top of that, I promised you listeners a uh, hundredth episode that we're going to do. A little bit of a hint on that AMC, CBM. That's all I'm going to give. But there'll be an interview with people. So uh, wait for that. <laughs> and Brian had already talked Ooh. about my comic news. He already spoiled it for me with his feedback. So thank you, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Michael it's Keaton. Awesome that, 
Uh, yep. Uh, I'm glad that there are listeners out there that actually keep up just like I do and love yeah. the idea of these comic shows and movies. So with podcast recommendations, Paik, uh, we basically throw out our friends, uh, people that we do listen to on our spare time. If you have any that you want to offer, please do so now. Yeah. I also do have a little bit of a comic thing. I think you have mentioned it the past couple of weeks, but the, uh, the Walking Dead special mm-hmm. one shot with... Negan lives supposed to be out what July first. Yep, you said uh, out this week. You said pull pull lists are important. Comic shops are important. I was looking at this today. From what I can tell, there will be no digital version of this comic book. It is available nope. only in shops and stores. So get with your local comic shop if you are interested in The Walking Dead. Negan lives. Make sure you can get yourself a copy from your local store because it's not going to be available digital. Or try Skybound direct because yeah. mm-hmm. Skybound do, does offer. So I have not checked the website. People, get onto Skybound's website and see if it's available for pre-order or purchase. Yeah. So do so. Yeah. Um, and podcast recommendations. Podcast recommendations. First, just personal ones that I like to talk uh, with. Um, I know it's good to just kind of not talk about these things too much, but you know you can't ignore it completely. So. Yes, obviously, COVID-19 is a thing. It's happening, still going on. So there's a lot of people do kind of tend to have a lot of free time or time at home sometimes, whether it's good or bad thing for you. But it's time to catch up on a lot of things when you have that time. And so my two favorite podcasts right now are rewatch podcasts with casts from shows. Scrubs and The Office are both doing rewatch. It's Fake Doctors, Real Friends with Zach Braff and Donald Faison covering each episode of Scrubs and kind of breaking those down with behind the scenes stories and then the same thing office ladies with angela kinsey and jenna fisher are doing the office that way just going to throw those out because if you don't know about those those are really fun if you like those kind of shows good comedy stuff but for other podcasts strange indeed check that out it's been covering some black mirror episodes lately and is doing some other movie stuff and uh they're just they're you know rima over there is chugging along and doing some really fun stuff and house podcastica is and i know steve has brought this up the past couple of weeks as well is doing cobra kai (laughs) right now rima's on that also with jason and richard and seasons one and two will be making their way to netflix sometime soon because season three has officially landed at netflix i know there was a bidding war and i know you steve was talking about that it is now official netflix has won that bidding war and cobra kai will be making its way there don't know exactly when, but it should be soon. Yeah, definitely. And I plan to. Now that I'm a Netflix sub- subscriber, mm-hmm. I didn't have YouTube, but I got those episodes and I got to watch them. The first two seasons, amazing. But now Netflix, awesome. And as far as what people are saying, they're actually not just ending it at, at season three because originally YouTube saw it as a three-season mm-hmm. show. So Netflix seems to think that there's more seasons involved. So that is a plus on that. Yes, they want to expand the the Karate Kid universe and story. So they want to keep that going. Yeah, definitely. My podcast recommendations, well, I've said it before. Steve loves it. Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. I highly recommend it because Mike really gets into people's minds and celebrities and sports people and all these people that he knows. So, And with, you know, he... It's kind of like almost like a self-therapy for him. So I enjoy listening to it because you get to know a lot of the celebrities and these people that you've never met before. And they're being casual and honest. Very much like the next podcast I always listen to, which would be ID10T with Chris Hardwick. I would always recommend him. He has a lot of people on as well. A lot of celebrities, a lot of people of interest. And of course, we cannot leave out... We have to go back on the next level podcast you know their network. Rewatch, which yeah. <laughs> we're in. So it's their rewatch of Lost. There you go. I had a brain. <laughs> you fart. got lost. Thank you. Not knowing what it was. I got lost and lost. <laughs> so yeah. Listen to Ben and Kristen on that the Lost Rewatch. It's funny how I just mentioned it too. I got a brain fart. <laughs> but regardless, that happens and I'm leaving that in. All right. But Listen to Ben and Kristen on those, as well as the Celebrity Spotlight with Ben back himself. And uh, keep an eye out for any more Next Level podcast content that's coming out. I believe there's a few things that are in the works on the Next Level that Ben is creating yeah. himself. So for YouTube recommendations, I always mention them. 
Michael and Jessica on the Grim Life Collective. Listen to them. Ever since this COVID-19 thing happened, they haven't been able to get out to do original content, to go to film locations or any of that kind of thing like they love to do and I love watching them do. So they've been doing a Saturday night watch party and it's up all night with the Grimms. And it's awesome to do because you'll have to have two devices. Watch one with them and you could comment. And then I usually do this on my Apple TV. I'll watch the movie that they post on YouTube. And then I'll watch them on my computer. And I'm able to comment with my computer at that point and just talk to them. Uh, I did not make it through the movie The Stand because they did the whole six-hour run of that movie all night long. (laughs) And I could make it through it. So sorry, Michael and Jessica, for that. <laughs> but uh, I recommend that you do those movie watches. They're pretty cool. They come up with some awesome, like, old horror or rare or oddities nice. movies that I have not seen that I love to watch for the very first time. So I recommend them. I also re- recommend Sean Clark. If you want, you could see him on Horrors Held Grounds. And that can be found on YouTube as well. And he visits movie sets of horror films too as well and he's been reposting his back catalog at this point so i recommend him he's been hanging around adam the woo and adam does a lot of things within the california and florida area and that would be amusement parks and sometimes movie sites as well lately he's been doing a restaurant review of areas that are open within the california area and him and Sean actually went to a few places that are pretty cool, too. And they give a few stories that were going on that, you know, things that they've encountered and met up with people. So cool. check those out. So YouTube, Rex, myself, not necessarily within the, the, the pop culture and like kind of that area of nerdy stuff, but it's also can probably be viewed pretty nerdy. Um, I do. Yeah. I do have some, uh, you know, sports interest. I have my sports and stuff that I do enjoy. And those have all been pretty much just canned this year. So I ended up finding myself watching different forms of sport on YouTube, <laughs> preferably racing of inanimate objects, such as marble racing. Def- as I would say, check out, you know, if you want something just like very different and fun to watch and you enjoy that kind of stuff, Jelly's Marble Runs, J-E-L-L-E-S. They have been doing a marble racing and right now they're doing a like Marble Olympics is basically what it is. They had to change the name for copyright stuff. It's just Marble League 2020. But it's like all these like Olympic events just with marbles. They launch them off of stuff and race them and it's it's interesting. And then marbles aren't your speed and you actually prefer more car racing than a 3D bot maker on YouTube. That channel is doing they do die cast car racing, like Hot Wheels and Matchbox cars. They have these tracks and they do full tournaments. People can modify their their Hot Wheels and send them to him, and he actually does. So it's like a real racing league because people modify their cars and the wheels and stuff, and he really does race them to see which are faster, who modifies them better. So It's almost like a Pinewood Derby yeah. for, like, Boy Scouts. Yeah. You make your own and send it on its way. Yeah, so that's that's actually <laughs> that's been really cool. fun to watch is these, like, Hot Wheel races that are all, you know, on these really cool tracks and great, you know, camera work and everything over there from him, and it's it looks very professional, but it's toys. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. yeah well, they, people could do so many yeah. things now with uh, 3D printers. They can make their own Hot Wheels or make yeah. their own cars and race them and mod them. And that's what it is. He makes his own tracks. He 3D prints all of his own tracks and start gates and timers and all that stuff. So, yeah, it's cool. I wonder if anybody put any NOS in it <laughs> and see if it goes fast. <laughs> all right. Well, to submit your feedback, we we can be heard on Spotify, Google Play, I, Apple iTunes, or wherever you get your podcast player of choice that you use. Uh, if ratings are available, we always ask, please give us a rating or a review on one or all of them, those platforms at least. You can check out our new website, www.panelstopixelspodcast.com. And to submit your theories and feedback, go to Facebook, www.facebook.com dot com slash panels to pixels you could also email us yes it's an old format and steve likes to bring it up every week and i'll say the same you could email us at panels to pixels one at gmail.com that's panels two that is spelt t-o pixels and the number one at gmail.com or you can call us and leave a voicemail like a party line at 845 
845-350-2095. That number again, 845-350-2095. And you could find us on YouTube as well. I've already mentioned that. We like to give out a lot of shout outs on YouTube, but you could just search Panels to Pixels podcast and please just Give us a thumbs up or subscribe. Hit that notification Anything bell. Anything that you do with... <laughs> What's up? So hit that notification bell. So it doesn't get lost oh, in your I, subscriptions. I won't say that. <laughs> so go down there and press that thing down there. And please leave a comment. It's like, do the full guys, YouTube do this. selling point. Go for it. <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. I Honestly, guys, we appreciate you. And if you could do that, it would be awesome. I'm not looking to make money off of YouTube. My feeling is it's just there for those. I... I have a tendency of watching or uh, like having podcasts play on my Apple TV, mm-hmm. and I enjoyed it when I heard, listened to Kevin Smith <laughs> back in the day when he had it and he would put his podcasts up. Other uh, podcasters do the same, so please do that. If you could subscribe, be great. Same, same thing with a thumbs up, and I've already – had received a bunch of comments on youtube so thank you guys for following thank you guys for making comments please if you do make a comment leave something about the next episode that you're interested in wanting to talk about that would be awesome so but obviously you guys could listen to me here on the next level podcast network but where can we hear you pick um just around uh, i don't have my own podcast that i'm on right now but i do like to jump around and guest co-host on things so as part of like the podcastica network uh listen to strange indeed i mentioned earlier covering black mirror stuff i recorded an episode with rima earlier this week we covered the black mirror episode white christmas and that should be out relatively soon if it's not out already today i don't think it's out yet but that should be dropping pretty soon so definitely you know on uh, spotify apple podcasts itunes wherever you get your podcasts look at strange indeed and when the white christmas episode comes up that is me and rima covering that so you can hear me there and then i'll i'll be around randomly <laughs> on different That's podcasts awesome. from time to time well we'll have you back on definitely again Paige, cool. and always thank would love you to. for doing this and stepping in yeah so that's our show this evening tonight, everybody. I'm Mark. And I'm Paik. And this was Panels to Pixels. And we'll see you on the next panel. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.